the Oakland Raiders, football's halfway house, and home to number 26, Skip Thomas, a man they called Dr. Death. Skip didn't like reporters, and cameras made him uncomfortable, ours included. He only talked to people he trusted, and that meant mostly to his roommate, Jack Tatum. It was through Jack that we finally located the reclusive Mr. Thomas. Don't pay him no attention. He's crazy. <laughs> We wanted to make Skip as comfortable as possible, so we picked a site close to his home in Kansas City that was suitable for a man called Dr. Death. What did you think when he said, we're gonna meet you in the graveyard and shoot the interview? I thought he's crazy. <laughs> At first, and then I thought about it. Well, Dr. Death. Now, after all this time, we're doing an interview. Yeah, seems strange. <laughs> Tell you what, you wouldn't have got it unless Jack told me that, uh, he said, yeah, yeah, they okay. Go on and do it. Just don't beat them up afterwards. Just getting Thomas to talk was a coup. He had done just two interviews in his life and felt shafted both times. What, what did they like about the writer? They lied. They tried to bait you into saying something and turn it around the other way. The press knew better than to even come down. I, we used to be at a, a corner of a locker room. You know, they had us in the corner. And I put some tape down. Cast that tape, I dunk you in the trash can, spit on you. I didn't want you down there. Man, I was the biggest defensive back there was. First of all, how'd you get the nickname? Well, it started from Bubba. Bubba Smith and Bob Brown. I guess they did strange things. So what kind of stuff, what kind of strange things, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, well, I'd get up in the morning, I wouldn't comb my hair, maybe. Get out there at practice and, uh, I'd be pissed off at Madden, and instead of uh, knocking a pass down or something like that, I'd take and kick at it like I was playing soccer. And they just said, leave Doc alone and uh, everything will be all right. He'll be there to play Sunday. And I never missed a game. Nobody really said too much to me. The only person who really talked to me was Jack. George, you know, Upshaw when he got pissed off at me. Or art. If I was doing something that I shouldn't be doing, you know, staying out real late at night, uh, drinking a lot. I mean, you know, like I would sit on the on the sideline, you know, like we'd be playing, and I'd sit there on the sideline. I'd be by myself, you know. I'd go down, way down on that end down there. Watch. I don't know if I was watching the game or thinking about what could I do to hurt somebody, you know, to make him think about me a little bit more or something, you know. Lucky for Skip, the Raiders weren't into conformity, and Skip could just be Skip. If Coach really had something to say, and he thought it was important, he'd tell Jack. And then Jack would relay it to me. Wouldn't run nothing for us to talk about as long as I was there on Sundays to play. I mean, you know, we teased each other every now and then. I guess some of the things I did in practice, he, he thought maybe, maybe he thought if, I, if he said something to me, then I'd start screwing up. See, because they always wanted me to catch the balls. You know, instead of knocking them down, just taking them and knocking them down or kicking at them, he wanted to, to practice intercepting. And I'd always tell him, pay me. Skip was a real lost treasure, and we're glad we tracked him down. But we discovered why this was only his third interview ever. Skip's a world-class cursor. My four-letter words come out more than I wanted to. Man, that was uh, That was messed up. Sometimes I don't even know if I'm saying it. Man, you hit that in his mouth. You got back up. Don't let us down. Don't let no come in here and steal money out of our pocket. Oh, yeah, y'all are really the real bad. Y'all better, better find some kind of way to come on with it. I hope his family was a, a lot better than he was, because the may not live to get off this. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to, because before it just comes out. I've been doing it all my life. Ever since I left high school, I've been, hey, hey, that's how come I don't talk to people.